So I have been pretty active in the self-help productivity space for the last four years. I have read tons of books, listened to tons of podcasts, watched hours and hours and hours of YouTube videos. And from that time, I have accumulated probably tens, if not hundreds of productivity hacks. And what I've actually found is that there are only five that you need to know to have a healthy, productive, and happy life. And in this video, I wanted to share those five things with you and what I've learned along this journey of four years of self-improvement. So the very first tip is kind of the foundation for the rest of the tips. Without the foundation of a house, you can't build upon it and you'll just have like a wobbly, like just a terrible house, right? So, so the first tip is to get your foundations right. And this means your health, your body, um, and everything around that. Oftentimes I'm like looking for that next productivity tip, that next YouTube video that's gonna share with me the secrets to being more productive. And what I've found is that 50 to 75% of the time, it's just about getting your foundations right. And the foundations I'm talking about is your health. And this is like eating, sleeping, getting enough exercise. I found that 80% of the time, if I ask myself the question, am I doing these three things right? If I'm missing one of those three things, I'll usually not have a as productive day. So making sure that we get these three foundations right first and foremost before we watch any more YouTube videos or try to find the next productivity hack, making sure that we have these three things in check is going to just skyrocket your productivity even if you never read a self-help book for the rest of your life. If you are sleep deprived, if you are not getting in some sort of daily movement, um, make sure that you get those things done and sorted out. And yeah, like don't even watch the rest of this video if you haven't gotten those things sorted out yet. So yeah, that's the first tip is to get your foundations right, manage your energy and everything else will just flow so much easier. So my next tip is about avoiding being busy, but focusing more on being effective. I took this simple productivity system from Eat the Frog by Brian Tracy, and it basically states this. Start each day with writing your to-do list, every single task that you're supposed to do. And then from that to-do list, start ranking your priorities from A to B to C to D, starting with the highest priority at A and then going down the list. The second principle is to never let a B priority get in the way of an A priority. And although this seems like really straightforward and simple advice, it's not always the case. And I found myself like checking emails and working on things that I knew weren't as important as my A priority, but it's always a little bit easier. And it's almost a form of procrastinating to work on our B or C priority tasks. So one practical example of this is like when I was still in university and I thought the way to get good grades was to like go to class, do your problem sets, um, raise your hand in class, study for the exam, review your notes and etc. And I found that at the end of the day, I wasn't getting the results that I wanted, which was good grades. When I took a closer look at what was actually preparing me for the exam, it wasn't attending lectures and it wasn't taking notes. It was actually doing the problem sets and writing practice exams. And when I shifted my priority from an even split between all of the ways that we study for exams to devoting 90% of my time to doing problem sets and writing practice exams, I found that I got 10 to 20% better results on my exams while spending less and less hours in the library. So the third tip is to eat the frog first thing in the morning. So this comes from the book, Eat the Frog. And the basic concept of the book is really simple. If in a hypothetical world, you had to eat a frog every single day, it would be better to eat it first thing in the morning and not stare at it all day. So for the last like one to two years, I've been trying to build this habit of coding every day for at least an hour to two hours. And I used to schedule my coding at the end of the day from five to 7 p.m. after my workday. And what I found was that at the end of my workday, I was really exhausted. I'd usually have a headache from like focusing so hard and I just wouldn't have like the energy to do coding because as you know, coding is like a very intensive task. Like it takes all of your energy and focus to code for like even 10 minutes, right? So once I learned about this method of eating the frog, I basically flipped my schedule on its head 
instead of coding after work, I coded first thing in the morning for two hours. And I found that doing the hardest thing that you have to do in the day, first thing in the morning, it really sets the tone for the rest of the day. And I found that no matter what distractions pulled me away throughout the day, um, no matter what else happened throughout my day, I was basically confident and in a good mood because I knew that I had done my most crucial task for the day, which was learning a new skill. So no matter what your frog is, let's say it's going for a workout or doing something that pushes your business forward, try doing that thing first thing in the morning and see what that does for the rest of your productivity. So my fourth tip is around um, social media. And uh, social media has really, I feel like, given me ADHD or something because I found that on days where I spend like more than two or three hours on social media, it really affects how well I'm able to focus on my other tasks. And I thought it was just me, like I thought I was just like the only person who didn't know how to use social media properly. But um, from doing more research, I realized that this was actually a thing. And basically when you're on social media, you are doing a highly stimulating task, something that gives you dopamine. Um, there's like little effort and high reward. You get to like laugh at funny memes, watch funny videos and whatever. Now, when we take a break from like a hard task, like doing an engineering problem um, or working on a YouTube video, those things are lower stimulus activities. There's no clear reward at the end of it. And so when you switch from something like scrolling on your phone to working on a difficult task, there's kind of like a cost of switching from task to task, from switching from a high stimulus dopamine activity to a low stimulus dopamine activity. And there are two ways to combat this. Number one is to like structure your low stimulus activity to be more of a short term goal so that you can get more dopamine out of it. And the second tip is to make sure that when we're taking breaks, we try to avoid those high stimulus activities like scrolling on our phone or social media to later in the day. So how I structure my day, um, not to say that I don't use my phone or anything, but early in the morning from like 7 to 12 p.m., I don't use my phone at all. Like I try not to check my messages or check Instagram or any of that stuff. And instead for my breaks, I will try to like go on a walk. I'll try to schedule in some, some movement or some exercise. And I found that by doing that, it keeps my brain kind of in this lower dopamine state. And so my fifth tip is to actually uh, keep track of your progress. And I do this using these. <laughs> so it's a lot of journals, but I actually have like, um, this is like my gratitude and affirmation journal. I use this journal for tracking my coding progress, this for all my work related stuff, um, and this for like my life stuff. So um, in this journal, I keep um, basically a daily spread where I schedule my daily habits, tasks, and most important things to get done. And then I also have a section where um, I basically have this monthly spread. So this is for the current month of February. And as you can, you may be able to see, there's like a weekly spread where I just tick off if I was able to do my habits. For example, with coding, I try to make sure I have five ticks off for two hour coding sessions by the end of the week. I track my basketball um, and all that good stuff here. So at the end of the month, um, I'm able to kind of have a monthly bird's eye view of how that month went, um, if I was actually able to uh, accomplish my goal this month, or if I need to retweak some things um, and improve upon my system. This is definitely like um, a little bit more of a commitment, but I've used everything from like sticky notes to a simple whiteboard. And basically you want something that you're gonna look at every single day. Like if you're not gonna use the journal every single day, um, then it's not as effective. But uh, if you have something to basically tick off or check off every time you've done a habit that you wanna implement in your life, then that is all you need to get this done. I've tried keeping my journal digitally, like on my phone or on my computer, 
And what I found was that I would go to my phone to like do my daily journaling and I would end up like on Instagram or something and I wouldn't even remember why I picked up my phone. And so I think that by having like something physical like this that just has one purpose, one use, um, and keeping this separate from like our digital devices um, is really important um, and it keeps me, at least I have like, I like go to social media immediately when I'm on my phone. So, so yeah, this has just worked fun wonders for me. I've started so many good habits from this book and I also just like jot down like ideas and keep track of my progress on all the important things that I have going on in my life. So highly recommend picking up like a simple journal um, or just something to collect your thoughts on. And that brings us to today's video sponsor, Skillshare. I get messages from you guys all the time asking me how to be more productive or how to improve your engineering skills. And the way that I do that is through Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of personalized premium classes. They are constantly updating their library of classes and there are zero ads on the platform, which makes the learning experience as seamless as possible. With their bite-sized classes, as well as the self-paced platform, Skillshare can accommodate to any schedule. I'm currently taking hand coding your first website, HTML and CSS basics by Rich Armstrong. What I love about this class is that the projects are really hands-on and engaging, and they really motivate you to continue on with the daily practice of coding. I know most of you are early in your STEM careers, so I suggest taking Python for Beginners, Design of Experiments, or SQL 101. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box below will get one month completely free of Skillshare, no strings attached. So that's plenty of time to get one or even two courses done on Skillshare. So make sure you click that link in the description box below. Anyways, I hope that you guys got something out of this video. Let me know if you have any productivity hacks that have changed your life. I'd love to know. Let me know down in the comments below and I will see you guys next week.